What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Altium tutorial. So this time I'm going to be doing a footprint for an 0201 resistor. And the reason I chose this one is because there's a slight difference. Uh, there's a little bit of a twist at the end that we need to make a uh, change because the resistor is so small. So, so I thought it'd be good to highlight this important difference. So I've already gone ahead and sourced a little example for us. This is just, I just searched on DigiKey for an 0201 resistor. This one just happens to be from Vichay. So as you guys should be hopefully familiar by now, uh, step one is obviously go in the data sheet and find the section where it gives you the mechanical dimensions for us. And in this case, um, the table is pretty simple, so we can just easily find them right away. I guess the one thing I want to point out too is so this could be a little bit confusing as seeing how in uh you know freedom units here it puts it as an 0201 but then a metric it's an 0603 right because there's also such thing in freedom units or aka uh, customary in mills right there's an 0603 in mills and so don't get that confused don't get an 0603 in mills confused with an 0603 in metric right because those are obviously going to be very different things so just make sure you're you're cognizant of that if you're checking out the package size, what the what the units are in. Um, so the next thing we want to do, of course, is check out the pad size, right? So just look at the table. We know it's A by B, so we're at 0 0.28 millimeters by 0 0.43 millimeters. Extremely, extremely small, right? So of course, the first step we want to do is go ahead and hit place and then click on pad and then just click right there. Let's change our designator first to one because there's only two pins on this resistor. So make sure we have them as one and two. And we're going to change it to a top layer. It was a through hole. We want to change the to top layer because this is a surface mount component. Then we're going to go down here, change the shape to rectangular. And then now we can mess with the size, right? So remember, the size was 0.28 millimeters by 0.43 millimeters. I guess it's also worth noting that there is no, um, there's no like margin of error listed on that dimension, right? So it wants, it wants strict pad dimensions. And, you know, given that they're the experts in manufacturing their parts, I'm gonna take their advice. And so we're just gonna go 0.28. 0.28 by 0.43 and we're not going to we're not going to ask any question um, then I think it's easy just sit there click on it control C control V place that so it's already the correct size change the designator to 2 and then next thing we'll look at is on the data sheet so remember we're going to do that that engineering math that we know how to do is so we're trying to go from center to center here because Altium does centers easily right it automatically locks onto the center of this pad we want to know how far away the center of the next pad is so we're going to go i think this is a lowercase l we'll call this we'll call we'll call this lowercase l right so it's lowercase l plus one half a from this edge to the center and then it is also lowercase l plus one half a to this center so center to center hopefully you're following it's it's just L, lowercase l plus a, so 0 0.28 plus 0 0.23. So quick engineering math, that is 0 0.51 millimeters away. So when you scroll down here, you need to find its location. Oh, it's graphical location that's right up here. So what I, what I say, 0 0.52, 0 0.52. Let's go back and double check, right? Because we never be afraid to double check these things. Uh, especially when it's a with a footprint that you're going to be reusing over and over and over and over again, um, you want to make sure you get it right. So we'll go back and check so lowercase l plus a, so 0.23 plus 0.28. So that's actually 0.51. See, so I made a mistake and I caught it. Unless I just made a mistake right there and I don't know how to do math, but hopefully. And this can make a huge difference, right? Because we're already dealing with extremely small components. Okay, so now for the twist. Now for the the catch. So if you look here, you'll see that there is a tiny little gap in between the uh, what is going to be the solder mask. It's right. Remember these these pads here. And I, I've explained it. These are what tell the computers um, 
where to leave holes in the solder mask. So right now we're telling it leave a hole in the solder mask that is right here that is this purple square size and then we're telling it to leave one right there. So we're basically telling it solder mask you gotta you gotta thread the needle between here. You gotta you know this is referred to as a solder mask sliver. If you look actually there's a PCB design rule. Let me see if I can actually just show it. You design rules. So manufacturing we're doing um should be a solder mask sliver somewhere. Minimum solder mask sliver, right? So we're looking at that. Right now that's set at 10 mils. So some research I did, I think you can bring this down a little bit to like two mils. Um, but in either way, let's let's just go back and look at our at our demo uh, component. So remember, it's that, let's say two mils is the best we can do. We'll put this in freedom units again. Uh, I want to go to report. I want to go measure distance. I want to make sure I'm on the smallest thing I can get. So right, let's zoom in a lot and let's measure how far away. Like this is one. This is a one mil snap, right? That I'm snapping to. So I can hold control to remove it. But um, so basically, we're going from here, and we want to line this up perfectly, which is not easy to do. Oh my gosh, so distance, this is one mil. This is roughly a one mil distance. So this is not gonna work, all right? Really that annoying measure. I don't know how to get rid of the measurement. No, that, doesn't, that literally does nothing. Um, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to, this is not gonna work. Um, this will lead to lots of problems with manufacturing. There's a reason they actually specify that number. You can actually lead to defects in your boards that can actually affect the performance like it'll like these little things these little slivers can flake off during production and just outright cause boards to fail they can lead to shorts all kinds of problems so we need to make these purple squares a little bit larger um, and by larger I mean smaller because what we're going to do actually is we're going to go down here to the solder mass expansion rule and we're gonna change this to manual and I'm gonna hit zero Okay, we're going to do the same thing for this one. Hit zero. Now, I will say, so it, it is actually very important to have a solder mask expansion rule for the same reason. It can lead to defects in your boards because there, there's errors in the process of, of making the actual solder mask pad. Um, so what I actually want to do is, so we want to click on the top solder. Um, and then what we want to do actually first, I think actually we, wanna, we need to undo what we just did real quick. Uh, and then we'll, we'll start from here and we will go to place and we're going to go to fill. So this allows us to just create like a, our own primitive and we're going to do like a little, I don't know if it tells us the actual dimensions of this. I don't think it does. It, it's easier just to do this. Um, so just go place, like I said, fill and then. But I'm just going to zoom in right here and I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to roll all the way down and then I'm going to it's not important to get it super okay that was not what I wanted to do okay we're going to expand this okay so what we have done is we if you see where I'm going with this is we just we're going to create one giant Solder mask dimension for us, okay? So just start, we'll place this in the corner up here. And then, okay, then we'll just drag it over here. Okay, right, so now we've created one giant solder mask, right? So you see that sliver, the, the problem with that sliver is now taken care of. Um, so now we can go back to here Double click and just place zero. Uh, that way we don't have like I don't like to have a bunch of extra um, like solder mask primitives lying around. So we're just gonna have this at a zero. And I actually checked to try to delete. It was very complicated. You can't like actually delete the. I don't think you can. At least you can't delete these things without deleting the pad. And you can't place a pad because um, it has to have certain properties like a designator and stuff is you can go to the top top layer and I can do the same thing. I thought, oh, I'm smart. I'll just place like another primitive like this. But 
problem is it doesn't have a designator and that like really messes with the LTM software. So unless you can figure out a way to place a designator on whatever this primitive is called, this, this is a fill. Unless you can figure out a way to place a primitive on or place a designator on a fill, uh, you can't actually create your own pads from scratch. So, okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we'll just drag this down here, place it. It nice and lined up so like that so basically that's what we did we created one giant uh solder mask pad so whenever it whenever it uh sees this we got rid of the sliver problem and we still get some of the benefits of the solder mask now in case you're maybe a little confused on how this actual process still works is i'll show you uh the paste mask squares are still the same size as the pad so you're probably thinking over oh, remove the solder mask isn't solder going to get everywhere or all over the place I would say there's probably a higher risk of it failing due to the lack of, you know, two separate solder masks, uh, like spaces, right? Two individual ones. Um, but since the paste mask is still like maintaining its actual size, right? And remember, if the paste mask is made is is uh, etched out of stainless steel, so they they could probably be there. It's a lot more robust material than the solder mask material, so. They can actually get really fine uh, with the with the sizing and the clearances of these things. So um, basically what I'm saying is placing the paste on these pads should not be affected too, too much. Um, but then but, but placing like the solder, making a super small solder mask um, would be a problem. That makes sense. Um, then, yeah, so the last part for this is going to be to place a mechanical layer on here. So um that's again pretty self self-explanatory this is not the right pad so this is a different data sheet i was like whoa um so we're just gonna go w by l by h so this isn't this one has clearance so we're gonna we're gonna make the biggest one so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.05 and then that's so it's 0 0.65 long by 0 0.35 wide okay so we'll just go mechanical we'll go place and we'll go extra to 0.65 long, and we'll go back. This is in millimeters again. Uh, it says 0.65, so is it, yeah, it's 0.65. So we can go to that one. I don't know why it's locking on my four millimeters. Okay, 0.65. Point six five the smaller, sorry. Point six five long by point three five I let's make a perfect rectangle and that's not a perfect rectangle. I don't know why this came out like that. There we go. And then we'll just hit, we're gonna go edit uh, the reference, we're gonna go center so we can center this thing very easily. And then boom, we're on the center. And then we gotta change the height. So we look at the height, it is 0.28. So the height, there's a type in number. Coral height is 0.28 millimeters. So we'll check it out in 3D now. Um, so it looks looking pretty good right there. Then of course we want to place those nice lines to make it look more professional. And these got, these are, these can be, I mean these will be pretty massive looking. Oh, this is on the wrong layer. These will be pretty massive looking compared to this tiny little tiny little pad. But don't worry, we'll mess with it and make it look nice. Okay, so this thirty point. That, so I like to have. I just arbitrarily picked a number based on what I think looks nice. The point one two five. Um, I might change this based on what the manufacturers say you can do, but right now I think point one two five is a fine number. And this also is a personal taste, right? It's whatever you, whatever you think looks nice. All right, so that pretty much covers it for this tutorial, right? So we've created an entire O two O one component part.
of footprint, I should say, component footprint. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on my end. Thank you so much if you made it this far. Don't don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, also drop a comment for stuff you want to do. Like I do I, lots of EE projects. Um, I try to teach some some fundamental knowledge I think is important for electrical engineering. So yeah.